Hello and welcome to Health and Heals with Dr. Lisa. If you are sexually active and not ready to become a parent yet, it is important to use birth control to protect yourself from pregnancy. So this is something I am really excited to talk to you about today because this is something basically I do every day with my patients. And for men, it's kind of simple because you use a condom or you can get a vasectomy. You don't really have as many choices as women. But for women, there are a lot of birth control options, which I love because, you know, every woman is different. And so one may not work as well for the other one. So that's why it's really important to know those different options. And I have women coming in and I do consultations all the time. So I am so thrilled to do this today. Okay. There are three main types of birth control barrier methods, intrauterine methods, and hormonal methods. Barrier methods are what we're most familiar with. These include products that block the sperm from getting to the cervix and usually include non oxidal 9 uh, spermicide, which will help make it more effective. Now, there's other things that are barrier methods like a diaphragm, and women co come in all the time. Now, this one has a hole in it, obviously it's not going to work with hole. These are the type of diaphragms that we fit women with. So what happens with the diaphragm is that you come in because this has to go around the woman's um, cervix. That's why the failure rate is actually pretty high. It's 18 to 20 percent because you have to get it in the right position, and then it needs to be left in for a time period afterwards. So sometimes it can get uncomfortable, it can cause bladder infections, and so because it has a low efficacy, this this is good for like um, a couple that's together and they're okay if maybe they get pregnant but they just don't want to get pregnant right now. So what we do, they, a patient comes in and we place this vaginally so it's flexible like that and we fit it over the cervix. We show the patient how to do it because the end of your cervix feels like your nose. And then we fit them with the largest size. They come in different sizes, the largest size that's comfortable. So again, that's um, the diaphragm. And there's also a female condom. I don't have an example of that today, but its failure rate is 21%. And again, that's because of positioning. Uh, there's usually what we, in, in failure rates, we predict um, like a typical rate and perfect use rate. So perfect use is if you were doing everything correctly and then typical use, which is the one you really want to look at because that's say you don't put it in the right place, you don't leave it in for the right amount of time. Those are, that's the failure rate that's really what's, you know, what's going to happen. All right. And then spermicides are not necessarily 100% useful in um, preventing STDs. They can provide some STD protection, but you can't rely on them. That's why you do want to use a condom with spermicides. Now, intrauter methods, or IUDs as a lot of women call them, and it's become very popular, is implanted by your gynecologist. It's really easy, it's really quick, and it's huge, hugely effective. It has a failure rate of 0.8% because it takes out the typical use failure rate because you don't have to, it's placed. You don't have to do anything or get anything right. So there's two different kinds. There's a copper IUD and it works by copper. Okay. It causes an inflammatory sort of reaction in the uterus that's kind of hostile to sperm. And um, then there's also the levonorgestrel kind or the progesterone um, type of IUD, which is also very, very effective. And again, that works by a bunch of different mes methods by um, increasing the dis density of the cervical mucus, again, by causing um, changing the lining of the uterus and by suppressing ovulation as well. So it has kind of a threefold way of working, but they're both great. They stay, they can stay in for a long period of time and they can be removed at any time. So these are very popular now and they're very, very good. Now there's also hormonal methods and these release a combination of progestin and estrogen. And there's many pros and cons of hormones. Um, and there's many different kinds. There's the one beautiful thing is there's so many different kinds. There's patches, injections, implants, there's oral. Um, the implant is uh, here. And basically, one, one that you'll see, besides like an IUD implant, is, um, is an implant that you can put in your arm. And it's about this size. And basically, you, you just place it under the arm and you can feel it. So um, that you have to know too. But it's very good. The only thing is it's very difficult to remove. It's really easy to place. It's very difficult to remove, but it's very good. And then there's also emergency contraception. So if you have one of those, those you know, nights where you have a little oopsie, the condom breaks or something like that, then you can actually a lot of times go to your pharmacist and ask for plan B without a prescription. Um, you do want to follow up with your gynecologist about um, STDs because if you didn't have any protection, you're also exposure for STDs besides pregnancy. So you do want to follow up with that as well. Um, you can actually um, formulate plan B with your own birth control pills, but it depending on the um, what dosage of birth control pill you have, it depends on how many pills you can take because plan B is pretty much 
the same thing, estrogen and progesterone, just the same thing you have in your birth control pills. So a lot of times you can call your doctor and say, you know, I can't get to the store, but this is the birth control pill pack I have. What, what, how can I, can I make the sort of the simulation of plan B that way too? So those are important things to know. You can do that yourself, but in, in conjunction with the doctor. Okay. And then I hope you really enjoyed this information. Oh, one other hormonal way is a, a vaginal ring. And this is really good. It can be left in for three weeks and you take it out when you get your period. And um, so this is not a barrier method. This is actually has hormones in the ring. And so again, that's another form. If you, you know, take, you can't really take a pill or you don't like to remember taking a pill every day. So there, are, the thing is, there's a lot of options for women to take control over their um, fertility. Okay. So for more information, talk to your OBGYN or visit the CDC's contraceptive website. I'll post the link below. And I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to submit them in the comments below or on my Twitter or Facebook page. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, I'm Dr. Lisa reminding you to be well and be fabulous. Mm -hmm.